It's all connected. It's all connected. It's all connected. It's all connected. It's Grimnir and Cirque. <laughs> well, I messed that up. I, I, I got started in the middle of the intro there, but that's all right. It is all connected. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> welcome, folks. It's, this is uh, episode 31 of the It's All Connected show here on this day, 2021-02-22. And the program's uh, title today is, What Difference Does Outrage Make? Are you outraged? Are you outraged? <laughs> and I am here today with my lovely co-host, Miss Circolo. Ooh. And how are you today, Miss Circolo? I'm good. We had a nice spring day. Cool. Warm weather and sunshine. And, and you're you're like eight hours ahead of me, right? So you're it's like eight o'clock at night there? It is exactly eight o'clock. Well, not exactly. Well, no, not exactly. <laughs> Almost. Almost exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you're late. I know. I'm late. Oh, I'm late and I messed up on the intro. <laughs> yeah. so how was your day so far? Oh, my day's been busy as hell. I've been working on various things Ooh. for the website, you know. Uh, lots of uh, graphic manipulations and such. And um, uh -oh. graphic, very graphic. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> Getting set, and who, so, who are you manipulating again? Graphics. Oh, you're manipulating graphics. Not not the guy named Graphics that used to come around here. No, oh. no, I I oh. would not manipulate him. Um, <laughs> he's too weird. <laughs> um, but no graphics for different shows. Uh, I was working on stuff for Gary L's show. Have you heard his show? I did some of it. It's very late. Okay, well, there's podcasts. Yeah, you I know. know. There's podcasts, and there's, there's also I do podcasts, and there's also bit shoots, bit shooters. Oh yeah, uh, I, I don't do really do bit shoot. Well, I don't. Know. It's bad streaming. It just it drops up. Sorry. Oh, I haven't had that problem. Uh, anyway, they're getting better because they've been getting money in to uh, good. boost up. So I, I really like bit shoot. Um, it, you know. I like so, the idea of bit shoot. For for me, a lot of times the problem is the uploading. When it comes to the uploading, um, mm. because uh, I upload something and it, and it says it's processing, then I wait a couple hours, and nothing happens. So mm. I say, all right, well, I don't know, maybe it got caught somewhere, and I re-upload, and uh, then that one sits there, and then I got to re-upload again. And eventually, they, they process it through. And the one that, like, when they finally process it, it's really fast. Instead of mm. if you sit there and wait for hours and hours and they don't process it, they're never going to get to it. So for an uploader, for an uploader, it's a little, it's a little different than a viewer. But uh, It's challenging. It is challenging. <laughs> but but they, they, they don't censor. They don't, uh, you know, they're, no. they're, they're not YouTube. And they're, they're not all, all after your ass for saying the wrong thing. Oh, this guy said something bad about vaccines or bad about some stupid election or whatever. And, and yeah, so, I was just watching a documentary about that Susan lady who's the CEO of YouTube. I don't know. I have no idea. Well, she comes from advertisement. Okay. Well, I, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all those restrictions. It's because of commercializing. All right. Yeah. No, I I like YouTube for a lot of purposes, but for uh, if you're gonna say anything they consider or deem controversial, uh, yeah, it's not so great over there. <laughs> no, because it's but well, that's really it's all geared for commercialized. Yeah. It's all geared for advertisers. So whatever could offend any sort of advertisers, what they don't want. Yeah, see, but I, I don't monetize over there. And, and that, that's basically, you know, um, it, mm. they, they look at it from that monetization point of view. And that's where a lot of people over there get upset and get angered and, and have their, 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 Hackles, you know what? What is that? What is that saying? Hackles. Yeah, their hackles <laughs> get raised. 
Um, oh, they get outraged. They get outraged. They and, get outraged. And so, you know, and I've had, I've had a few videos over there that have been um, taken down. I, I've been banned over there on the, uh, 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 you know, just for a short time. Um, mm. apparently that's their, that's like they're slapping your hand, you know, Ooh, you mm. bad guy, you said something we didn't like. So we're going to stop you from uploading, even though the video that they banned was like two years old, um, <laughs> which I don't even know how they go back and find these two year old videos. I mean, if you didn't ban it two years ago, why ban it now? Uh, well, well they just run their algorithms through their entire, uh, catalog. Though, right? Yeah. I, yeah. And, so anyway. So I didn't. I don't get outraged over that, but a lot of people do, and especially mm -hmm. those that monetize, uh, yeah. which you, yeah. you know, it's and that's their income. That's what they, uh, um, you know, that's that's how they generate money. And well, it's because YouTube are their bosses, though, right? And they in, in that way, yeah, very, sure, um, sure, sure. And they and, and they, they just and, happen to have very mood swingy bosses. <laughs> and, and the thing is, you know, they'll tell you stuff over there like, oh. Uh, well, uh, you you violated our community standards, but they don't tell you how you did it or whatever yeah. it is that you yeah. said that violated their community standards. Same same with like Twitter, and I'm I I guess also Facebook, but I don't use Facebook, so um, I, I don't know um, how yeah. how that I'll, you know. But uh, yeah, all, yeah, all of those uh, ones, and, and they'll, they'll 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 kick your ass out because uh, because you said. Trump's not a bad guy, even though he, even though he was a horrible guy, or is a horrible guy. Um, <laughs> uh, or yeah. you say this election was rigged. Yeah, yeah. Well, all elections are rigged, and they always have been. So, yeah, yeah. yeah whatever, man. Uh, they, whatever, they, man. They, 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 well, no, <laughs> they, they they just made it more obvious this time that that's what they yeah. were doing. So, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. But but I you know those those are the kind of things that people get outraged over, and, and you know you can go go over onto like Twitter anytime if you're a Twitterer, which um, I know you I know. See, you're... I think that uh, if you um, if people started tuning out all that that noise, right? Uh huh. All the uh, reactions to what life and what is going on, right? then more and more people would start understanding what is going on and not just understanding how others are reacting to what is going on. Okay. Well, you, 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 most of the news today and most of everything is some is, you know, news about how somebody reacted to what's go to what's going on. Well, no, and, and it's, you know, since they, they, they gear it, to try and get you to be outraged about a certain thing. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, because, you know, that's what gets them uh, people's eyeballs looking at them, is yeah. if you can be mad about something, you're going to look back at this, you're going to reference this, you're going to, uh, you know, make a big thing about this here. And and if you disagree with one of those clap outlets, uh, then, uh, uh, then, then that's when um, they're going to bounce you and you're going to get more outrage. I saw a thing the other day. Uh, some people posted up a, a, a whole deal about censorship uh, on the YouTube. Mm. And what did they do? <laughs> they censored it. They censored it. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> but it's all geared, though, right? It's all geared for for keeping people in that noise. Well, t tell me this. Tell me this. Uh, what what causes you outrage? Um, well, uh, I I I would say injustice, right? But that's just such a emotional and broad term, right? Because that is what most anger comes from is is something being unjust to me or to somebody else, or if I right. feel something yeah. isn't fair or right. And, and so, when was the last time you got got so fired up about something that you saw uh, that that outraged you to such a degree uh, that that you made a big noise about it? 
uh, well, <laughs> I think we were all here when that happened last Monday. <laughs> oh, was that three weeks ago? What, what was that? Because when Rob turned into an idiot. Oh well, he just was having fun, but it was misunderstood. <laughs> it was misunderstood. <laughs> that, 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 that was that was pure. okay. When Rob was having fun, I that was, that was purely <laughs> a misunderstanding. Well, I got outraged. That you I? did get outraged. That's right, and you yeah. ra- you rage quit. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah. I'm, I'm still uh, not going to be. No. Well, I also learned something from it, though. Which was. Uh, that a whole part, there's a lot of shit I don't want to be part of. Okay. And I learned that I can I can be somewhere and not be part of it, and just leave if I'm not if it's not what I want to be part of. Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. But but that made me that that was an example of me being outraged because okay. I do tend to I do tend to have an outrageous kind of person. And the, but that was that was a personal thing. Um. That's not no, I like, think I no, I think I, that was no, not really. But but it, no, I, it was, was. A, to me. What I saw was a dig move. So I reacted to a dig move. Okay. All right. It's a good thing because I, I I tend to get um, outraged by dig moves on trains too. Okay. Um, but but isn't pretty much everything on the train a dick move? No, no. No? <laughs> as long as the official uh, train personnel is not around, then I'm good. <laughs> I'm usually outraged by official uh, personnel. Okay, so taking back to um, the question of the show name, what difference does outrage make? What difference? No, did, 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 it, did it make a difference that you got outraged? It did not make a difference to yeah. uh, the world. No, it did not. And so does outrage never do, right? It generally but it don't. made a difference to me. It made a difference to me because it forced me to stop up and uh, examine something that clearly triggered me and uh, relate to that. Right. And from that, I changed something. <laughs> uh, I changed something within me, though. I found a, another level of I don't give a fuck. And that's a good. That's a good. That's a good a level to have. Yeah. <laughs> I've always thought that that was always the whole meaning of, well, to me at least, one of the meanings of of hanging out on RLM was to learn the whole "I don't give a fuck" attitude. Okay. So I, I think I'm just learning it in a different way because to me, "I don't give a fuck" doesn't mean I don't give a fuck about other people. It means. Uh, if if I don't give a fuck about how this is, um, um, if if I don't if I don't like if I'm if I don't appreciate if I'm not having a good time, then I don't give a fuck enough to not just let it go. Okay, well, so um, would you classify yourself as a nihilist? No, I wouldn't. Okay. I would want to be. I'm an aspiring nihilist. <laughs> All right. But, well, but I have like oh, I have I have this um devilish uh idealism in me. I just can't let it fucking go. Okay. Cuz I I definitely consider myself to be a nihilist. Yes. Um pretty much apathetic towards most things. Um because as the you know uh, it doesn't make a difference what the outrage I mean, it has in the past, and it still can today. Uh, I mean, if you look back at, like, the beginnings of uh, these United States of America, um, then then um, uh, you could say, okay, the, uh, like, uh, take, the, take the, uh, the Boston Tea Party, right? Mm. That made a difference mm. be- be because they actually caused some action to go forward to break them free, uh, which you know took many years um, and a lot more action than just throwing tea in a harbor. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, so. Um, but that, but the outrage doesn't do that. It that did. Would be it did. The actions that would be the actions that came with the realization of the outrage, though, right? Right, but they would have never taken those actions without the outrage. No, no. You sometimes you need that outrage to stop up, but if you're just 
in you know constant in the outrage you know outrage is a reaction to something so if you're always out there if you're constant in the reaction and never in the action Right. Then you're just adding and being in the noise. Right, right. Hey, I'd like to welcome a new uh, chatter here that may possibly be doing a new show here on Real Liberty Media. And and, and his name is Redneck Dentist. Um, so, howdy, Redneck. Good to have you here with us today. Uh, <laughs> I, am I supposed to say yee-haw or something? I, no, I, I, I don't know about is that. that. That's not a redneck thing you is he a uh, appropriate response to a redneck? Uh, yeah, a redneck happiness, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, you know, we we got several. Well, I don't know, several. Well, we got a few people that could be classified as rednecks in here, which uh, it's cool. Um, <laughs> and, and I think there's a wide range of uh, uh, folks that uh, uh, would be thrown into that redneck category, whether or not they're, uh, uh, you know, cousin lovers. <laughs> so I have I have fun with the rednecks. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what the difference is between a redneck and a hillbilly. I yeah, think rednecks again, are the posh ones, right? I I I I don't know that there is actual an actual difference. Maybe the hillbillies mm -hmm. live in the hills and the rednecks just live in the country. I don't know, uh, or maybe it's or maybe it's purely um, attitude. Oh, yeah. So a redneck don't get uh, offended if I call them a hillbilly. Probably not. Um, even though we probably may, may not live in the hills, our free enslaved point points out quite correctly here um, that rednecks. Whoa, what the hell is that? I was trying to read something and, and it, somebody <laughs> posted a whole big thing in there. Uh, rednecks are from farming and working outside. That, that's where that's where the term originally came from. Uh, is uh, farmers be out there working, and uh, they you know they're wearing yeah, their yeah, hat and their yeah. shirts, but right. the back of their neck was exposed to the sun as they're out there working in the fields, and so their necks would get red. So that that's where it originally came from. Not that it really applies so much to that anymore. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they all got the fancy tractors now, so they don't have to stand out there in the sun. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. So, uh, yeah. I don't know. I think it, rednecks to me is... Um, it's what they have those in Sweden too. Sweden is a well. You got redneck. a lot of farmers over there in Sweden, don't you? Sweden has a lot of rednecks, and by rednecks I mean people who like moonshine and and make their own, you know, make their own alcohol. They uh, yeah. Well, those are. I think that would be more shoot in the, animals without licenses. And, <laughs> I, I, those are more in, more in the hillbilly class, uh, classification. Oh. Yeah, well, they have they have uh, the same um, haircuts too. Is that right? Mm. Yeah. So I wonder <laughs> if the uh, going way off tangent here from the from the show topic, but uh, I, <laughs> I wonder if if, if the uh, the rednecks that have mullets are actually rednecks because they have hair cover in their neck. Ooh, maybe that's a counter. Uh, you know, you know, you know what a, the whole thing grew from. You, they didn't want to be seen as dim rednecks. You know what a mullet is, right? Yeah, that's the Swedish haircut, I would say. Uh, business the redneck in the, sweet, we call it a Swedish haircut. Uh, business in the front, party in the back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah those are the yeehaws. Oh, I, I, you, you know, the, 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 the song I used to play at the end of uh, all the Freakers Ball shows. Uh, the mm. Black Black Betty song, yeah, by the by the band Ram Jam, um, mm. they had mullets. They were they were mullet people, yeah. mullet, mullet boys, yeah. uh, mullet boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny because um, 
they live differently, right? And so they are looked up, down upon, right? I don't look down upon Isn't them. That, no, I, I have in I, a general I, I, sense. I do well. Pff, you know, the cities. nicer, the upper, the nicer society, right? You know, you know those, you know those city folk. The city folk. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they look down on anybody that's not exactly like them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that, that live in different ways. That's why I live out here in the middle of nowhere, man. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want to deal with them city folk. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. They. Those. Those people are are plain messed up, judgmental. But see, that's the thing, though. When I when we left Copenhagen and I had to find a house, I went with the part of um of of Denmark that is most like Copenhagen. <laughs> It's, so it's pretty much people who left Copenhagen are mainly the ones who live up here. It, it's hard breaking away from that. You know, I, I, I lived in in San Diego for 40 years. I mean, I was I would move there. I was moved there, I should say, when I was four years old, and I left when I was 45 or well, almost 45. So yeah, I was for, there for 40 years. Now I've been here like 16 years yeah. uh, out here in the middle of. Well, I, I specifically chose not to look for places um, south of Copenhagen because um, that's <laughs> I guess that's where you would find the rednecks of uh, Denmark, which aren't really rednecks, but um, very suburban. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, <laughs> urban, very uh, rural, very urban. rural, rural. Yeah. More than well, how rural? See, but see, Denmark doesn't get all that. No, well, okay, the big mainland of Denmark does, but Sealand, where we live, doesn't really get that rural. It, you know, it just turns suburban. Okay. So, so and, now, do the urbanites piss you off? No. No, okay. no, no, no. Nothing pisses me off. Okay. All right. Good. That's good. I'm good up here. Right. I, I'm a jet. I, I many years ago. That's that's the whole "don't worry, be happy" thing, right? Yeah, don't worry, be happy. The whole not being outraged. I'm trying to learn not to react with anger, and be outraged and not not react <laughs> so much. <right? laughs> it seems to have been the the path for me the last couple of years is to not react. You know, trying to learn not to react, and f from that to be in a nice calm state of mind. So, do the uh do the lockdowns give you cause you outrage? Uh um they do if I went looking at it, right? Right. Well, I mean, if you wanted to it, do it would if I, if I if I go down that, you know, if I start thinking, if I start giving it attention, it would piss me off, mainly because of all the small companies. Right, exactly. They're, yes. they're destroying small business everywhere around the world. Yeah. And and that is a fairly outrageous thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a money grab. To me, this whole COVID thing is mainly a money grab, most of all. Oh, it, it, it's, a, it's a total money grab. Well, it's, it's a transformation or the great reset, as it's been called. Um, and is being called by those that believe they're in charge of everything. Um, mm. So, yeah. To, to the big, to the big uh, bankers and investors and hedge funds and pharma and, and um, tech, right? The tech industry. Yeah, sure. Oh, well, every uh, uh, any industry that is not directly a part of whatever government um, – those are the ones they're going after. Those yeah. are the ones they're killing. So, um, I mean, those are the ones they want to get rid of, and and also the currencies. Uh, that, that's 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 a big part of it too. They want to kill all the global, all the various global currencies and switch into some kind of global digitalized currency. Um, but what and does not the and not do, right? they don't not a decentralized global currency. They want totally centralized. Yeah. Well, well, this is the, that's the whole game. It's centralization. You just you can just boil it all down to one nasty, nasty thing, which is centralization, right? 
Sure. And the answer to everything, <laughs> life, love, and the universe is decentralization, right? Not 42. Well, we, we still don't know the question, so uh, giving the answer. Um, <laughs> yes, it's decentralization. But, but then what is the question? <laughs> what is all good? What is to drive toward all good? Decentralization, the breakdown of all power to the lowest of levels, right? Yeah. That would be that would be what if you know that and, would and, I would be an uh, and and and, and to your perspective, what is the lowest level? Well, it's the government of one. Right, an individual, the individual. So as long as when you can drive, if you have to constantly drive force down to that level, because it's going to grow upwards. <laughs> For some reason, when human beings get together, force and power start centralizing. Well, you, you know, and I've I've noticed this, uh, is that when people get together, they immediately look for a leader. Yeah, uh, it's uh, and, insane. It's insane. <laughs> and generally, the people that want to be leaders, uh, that, that put themselves out there as leaders, are psychopaths. Um mm -hmm. Uh, they're, they're they're horrible people, and but they want to be leaders, and people look at them and go, "Oh yeah, this guy, he's standing up there, he's saying the words that I want to hear. We'll make him the leader." Uh, of course. And since we have that natural instinct, we need to you know counter that with a constant movement of decentralization, right? Well, and getting people to to think and act on their own for themselves. Yes. To, to do what is, they know is the proper thing um, is – it's almost impossible. Um, but I think one of the steps – well, it is to me, to my drive toward that cognitive uh, um, disassociation, right? Right. The, the drive is, is for me to um, really try to unhook myself from all those reactions and all those emotions and thoughts. Right that comes with this constant noise that we're living in. Yeah. Because every, everything you well, just, you know, whenever you get exposed to the, and I'm going to, I'm just going to use the word commercialized world, right? Whenever you're exposed to the commercial world, mm -hmm. which would be, you know, every time you open a media, every time you interact with something, or every time you go out of your door, um <laughs> <Vinny. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah well but, you, but you know so you're just in that noise and that that whole noise is just geared toward making you constantly react and have emotions and have reactions see, from, and it's just one big distraction from really learning about what is yeah and then starting changing it See, for for me, when when I was a little, when I, when I was a little kid, I, I had a I had a bad temper. I was I was an angry little bastard, and Ooh, uh, and apparently I was that way since birth. Um, so I've been told. I don't recall those early years, you know, before I was like five or something. Um, but uh, I, I I apparently I was always uh, they they called me sad, but really I was angry. Um, <laughs> and, 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 you know, throughout, you know, my whatever years up to, I was like 16 when I left the, the, the parents' house, I was pissed off, you know, cause they're always telling you shit to do. And I didn't want to do their shit that they, that they said I should do in, in the way they said I should do it. Um, and, 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 and so, and I think that's what it comes down to still to this day, um, is I don't like being told what to do. I, I am I am not a fan of that. So I, I never could quite understand um how people like could join the military uh, where where you are under, you know, whatever idiot's direction and you have to do mm. things exactly how they say and, and in their way. Um so it's like how could you do that? How could you uh, give up your own free will uh to that group of people that, that act that way and treat you that way? 
Yeah, but mm. but a lot of people. I mean, look, there's millions and millions of people that are in the various and, and and you only need that kind of brainwashing and um, programming if you're going to ask people to do something that is inherently against their own uh, natural ways, right? Mm -hmm. Like killing other people in war, right? Which yeah. Yeah, just people, I mean, not even people you know or that you have anything against, but you're told, go shoot that guy. Yeah. And what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and that guy's on the other side. He's sitting out there. He don't want to be out there getting shot at and shooting at people. Well, mostly. Uh, there are some that do. I mean, you do have the Hansels of the world, but um, mm -hmm. that, uh, I mean, I don't know for sure, but he certainly pretended to be uh gung ho military boy. Um <laughs> which Yeah. Uh yeah. 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 So so people that follow along blindly they 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 don't make me happy. Uh do I do I get outrage over them to some degree? I I would have to say I do. Um I mean if you consider like the the mask wearing situation going on. That would not happen if people saw it for themselves and realized that they, these masks are freaking useless. Um, and, well, that's, and, well, that's because of all the noise. And not, not just useless, but very harmful. Yes, but have you seen how much noise all the media and all the platforms everywhere is exposing when it comes to that shit? Yeah, well, no, it is it, not it's, even it, possible it, to sit in a corner of the world no more and just think your own thoughts. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a constant drumming of of their whatever constant. their agenda into everybody's head. Uh, yes, wherever that may be, wherever you get your information from, um, uh, they. they need, I'm, I'm, the more I I live, the more I learn that I need, I personally need my inner to understand the outer. I need I need to be in some form of tune with my own mind in a calm way for me to digest and derive meaning and learning from whatever is coming from the external world, right? That's that's what that's the way I function at least. Yeah. And I can't do that if I am constantly reacting and in the noise. If I'm part of the noise that is distracting everybody from just understanding the more um, basic building blocks of how everything is and yeah. what is. Okay. You, you, there's no doing that if you're in, in this, in that noise. Right. It's better to have a, a uh, uh, wider view uh, than, than uh, Focusing in on the little minutia. Yes, I have. I've, I've I've learned about myself that if I don't have that calmness and if I don't go to that inner place to understand and find meaning, then all I'm doing then I can live an entire life just reacting, just reacting in the external world and never really understanding anything. Right. That makes sense to me. So to me, one of the biggest eye openers in understanding how how things are was to, you know, tune out the noise and to not go with the outrage. You going to sleep now? Play little lullabies for circling. Uh, <laughs> well, this is about the time I close everything sort of down for the night. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh, I, boy. I, I don't think all the noise and uh, and the noise here being, you know, the media watching the news, watching others react to the news, watching people react to others react to the news, um, Yeah. yeah, it brings a lot of outrage, but it doesn't bring a lot of other shit than outrage, which is more noise on top of more noise on top of more noise. 
So I, I, I'm, I'm just about reached the part where I said that if you're in this outrage generating mode where everything just gets more and more loud and outrageous, right? Yeah. You're probably well, but, to but, the whole but, but think about it for for uh, for every person that is outraged over some specific topic. There are those on the other side of that topic that are huge boosters of whatever it is you're outraged against. Yes. So um, unless unless you can uh, get to a, you know a point on something where you can flip that, uh, then your outrage is is, is totally useless. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can. You know, you're uh, well, well, um, uh, like the uh, the Smashing Pumpkins song, "Bullet with Butterfly Wings." You know that song? No. Oh well, there's a line in there. There's a line in there, and it says, "Despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, there, and and maybe if you know what I what I learned though, Grim Marys, right? The more you learn to tune out all that noise and just go with it with the um, you know with, with with some bliss and some mindfulness, you can start unlocking um the other dimensions of this reality though and and maybe in that see that there really is no cage though. There is no cage, there is no box. The more there outraged is no you are, the more cage you're gonna get. But if you find into that that peacefully, where you can transcend that, there is no cage. There is no cage. But you make your, you build your own cage, and it, and it holds you up just fine. Yeah. Yeah, it holds holds you into yeah. your your spot, your position, because you know when, once you you have the the belief that whatever it is that you're so mad about um, is 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 the bad thing, then you 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 kind of trapped yourself into that and that's where uh it's better to have ideas than beliefs because you can change an idea yeah changing a belief is a much harder task yeah yeah you know um and that that's a that's a line from a movie um mm -hmm. well it's, and you can well if you have some you know you can Pivot over your values uh -huh. more so than you can over your 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 beliefs and thoughts too, right? Yeah, well, values are different. I, I mean, that that's something you hold as a, as a as a personal aspect of yourself, yes. your values. You know, well, like for example, now I I could I could say that there is stuff I get uh, one at least one kind of thing that makes me outraged, and that that is when I see people abusing animals. Because, you know, the a animals have, have no way to uh, protect themselves against, you know, the, the, the evil things that humans do to them. Um, and, and, and that, you know, that would go off to other, other kind of things like children, uh, you know, people abusing children in various ways. I, I, that, that pisses me off. I don't like that. Yeah. Um, but doesn't that come to your core values, though? It, it does. And it does come to my core values because... Uh, it, <laughs> and I, I think I've been that way too since you know since since I was born or at least since young childhood um, is that when I, when I saw abuse of uh, the those that could not defend themselves in any way uh, that that's always that's always gotten to me um, yeah and and I I don't I don't see that changing and I don't think it should change. I don't think I don't think you should just see that kind of crap and accept it. Yeah, you should you should not accept when when somebody is 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 doing horrible things to to children or animals or uh, those weaker than them, um, or the more or, you know the more defenseless people out there. Those, that, that kind of stuff it irks me. And uh, um, I I, I know, would say that in the government of one, I I think values are a core you know, part of what should govern that. Sure. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, I don't you know. think you have to justify with words or logic why you don't like animal abuse. 
Uh, no, I, it should it should be quite just, well understood. Just <laughs> just <laughs> you know, as it is. Yeah, yeah. Of course, and I and I think about that. I understand that I still do uh, eat animals that have been probably abused their whole life before they were slaughtered and packaged and sent to the store. Uh, and yeah, I'm okay with that for whatever reason because. I like the meat (laughs) (laughs) or the eggs because, you know, those chickens and those egg egg, egg farms are, uh, they're, they're not treated well. Um, There are ways you can get eggs from chickens who had a nice life, aren't they? No, no, I I do it. I, and I get them from local, I get my meat and eggs here, um, you know, in, in Moriarty, which I was not able to do in San Diego. Uh, but mm-hmm. here, here in Moriarty, we, we've we've got ranches and farms here that um, they do treat their their animals well uh, mm-hmm. there, and and it's sold here at the local store. So yeah, my, I mean, <laughs> but I understand uh, that that uh, typically the factory ranching, farming, whatever you want to call it, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, I can't get behind that, but I don't want to stand up against it either, you know. But it's it's well, it's just part of the nasty centralization, though. Optimization, centralization. Right. You know. Sure, sure. Yeah. It's it just uh, I don't know. That's a nasty energy to gear something toward. It's tainted. Right. If you're constantly focused on optimizing a system for its maximum capacity, you just, you, you know, that's tainted. You're right. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you need, in the noise world, you know. Right. Yeah. But, but as far as things like all the uh, political nonsense that people tend to get excited over, um, uh, that that kind of stuff is meaningless to me, uh, and and it, and and if you look at it from a, uh, a logical perspective, uh, you realize that it you know it doesn't matter uh, what, you know what these clowns go up there and say the politicians, um, I mean, because they're they're lying, they're they're always lying, and and they try and act like. Okay, this is the, the, this side takes this and that side takes that. When they when both sides take the same, um, so uh, <laughs> but but they but they try they get people all fired up and uh, uh, going you know thinking oh these are conservative thoughts or those are liberal thoughts or those are uh, the, the Green Party or whatever. Uh, and 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 really they 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 don't do anything different. They all get together and agree on. Uh, on all the nastiness they're going to push on all the people, um, yeah. And and so you you may think you're out, you're listening to this guy giving some kind of great speech about all oh, the wonderful stuff he's going to do for you once he he gets into power. Of course, if you think about what he's saying and how he's going to be able to do these wonderful things for you is by doing something nasty to somebody else. Um, <laughs> but it's an, and and politics is even evolving now or devolving or however you wish to express it though right into now it's not even look at what I will do for you now it's look at how I'm not this and this or look at how I won't do that and that so it's not even about doing something anymore it's just a, a constant fight about not being something yeah I, I guess so I mean I, I don't really listen to them so I, I don't know uh, what what their point of view is. I mean, I, I listened to them in the past. I used to be uh, semi-statist, I guess. I mean, I was I was I was uh, part of the Libertarian Party there for a while, um, and you know, people oh, they're Libertarian, they're good. Well, uh, uh, in in uh, theory, um, <laughs> but they're not. They're no different than than, than the other ones. Um, and and way back, eighties, uh, um, I guess, nineties. 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I when uh, when Ross Perot. I don't know if you know who he is, uh, but he, I heard the name. Yeah, he came about and he was and he was talking good stuff about stopping the uh, 
uh, all of, all of the the terrible spending uh, going mm-hmm. on. Which to me that was wonderful because if you stopping the spending means uh, pretty much ending the military industrial complex, uh, mm-hmm. which to me was that was that was one of my primary goals. Is is you got to get rid of all all this military? You're out there blowing people up for no reason. Um, well, you were anti-war hippie, Grimner. My entire life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, even when I, when I was an angry young child, I, I was uh, like, you know, like he said, it's against the injustice, uh, and and mm-hmm. wars are never just. They're never just. Yeah. Um, senseless mass murders. Yeah, it, it's yeah. craziness. So yeah. Um, yeah, I've always been. Uh, I don't know. Wars doesn't even make me outraged no more. They just make me sick. It just makes me sick of everything. Just ugh. Right. And if you look at something like 9-11, right, um, which which was a hoax. I'm not a hoax, but a false flag. Um, I mean, it wasn't a hoax because they did kill a lot of people on that day. Um, mm. And they used that day where all those people got killed to push through the, this this fascistic Patriot Act um, here in the U.S., you're, you're familiar with that, I'm sure. Hit the, hey, everyone in the so-called free world was hit by that shit. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and when uh, was it Bush or some idiot came out the next day and said 9/11 changes everything? He was not lying about that. It did. Oh, no. It did. They, I mean, that was the the beginning of the stripping of all your rights. Well, not the beginning, it, not the beginning, but the acceleration. And not just in America. Every not, one of your allies were of, of, or their. Can I say their allies? Yes, their allies. Ah, uh, yes, was they're, affected they're, by this. They're, they're certainly not my allies. Um, no. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at I'm looking at Twitter here as we're talking about this, and there's a, a quote here by Voltaire. And it says, those who can make you believe absurdities can make you commit atrocities. Oh, yes. Which fits right in with what the whole 9-11 crap was, is they made you believe this absurd nonsense that uh, some people with uh, towels on their heads got on airplanes and flew them into buildings when that's not what occurred. Um mm-hmm. uh, Yeah, and, you know, in my view, and I have no proof to, to back it up. But I believe those planes, uh, where there were planes, which they were not all planes, but where there were planes were remotely controlled uh, by those pushing the agenda to push through the Patriot Act and take away all your rights. Um, yeah. Now, of course. And, and, and go back to the old, because, that you know, they went back to the old Cold War kind of ways. Mm-hmm. It really was a push towards even more of the CIA bullshit. Oh, absolutely. Well, and, you, I, I, and they're just you part of the... And human, humanity would be, you know, getting over the whole Mossad CIA thing. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. I mean, it's tainted and polluted everything on this planet for the last, what, 70 years? At least, yeah. Well, since, you know, since uh, they, they, they gave the land to the, the Jews there and called it Israel, since then... Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that whole Mossad thing, you know, um, and, and and you know they may have had that before. I, I just don't know. Um, be, before they they said this is our land now, and we're going to do terrible things to all of our neighbors, and you're not going to say anything bad about us because if you do, then you're an anti-Semite, um, which of course is also a misnomer because Jews are not actually Semites. Uh, <laughs> that's, but that's a that's a whole different topic. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh boy! So so there's so much misinformation, misdirection. Uh, what was that one show we did? Um, Deceive and Vagal. I forget. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. So that, that's that's where it comes down. That that's what it comes yeah. down to is yeah. is is the, everything you hear is is a massive deception in order to get you to follow along uh, uh, with their whatever they say is proper and true, to get you and to... And they're just making... See, that's the whole thing. They just 
put out a lot of noise. And they're going more and more emotional with their noise just to drive more and more reaction into humans, right? It's more and more fear and and of, of the most um, basic emotions in humans that they're playing on right now. Right. And it's so much noise and it's stopping everybody from just sitting down under a tree thinking things over. Yeah. And, it, and I really think that people need to sit down under a tree and think things over. People, and, and I, I use the word meditate, but um, that means different things to different people. But uh, uh, there, there is that, that old thing, know thyself. Turn off the noise and just... And, uh, that, that old thing, know thyself. And it, cause yeah. if you don't know who you are, then you can easily be steered into being what somebody else wants you to be. How? 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 Because we sit in this endless flow of information, right? Oh, yeah. If you don't, if you don't digest, if you don't just take time out to just turn it off and digest and un, and and I hate to say, go into nature, right? Go into what you were created from and where you were created and just reconnect a little there and digest and just focus on what it is that comes in. Yeah. Hey. I'm not answering it. Somebody from South Dakota. I don't know. I don't, I don't what know. if it's the world's oldest oak tree calling you to say, hey, come out and hang out with me? I, I don't know anybody in South Dakota, so when I get a call from okay. South Dakota, I don't answer it. Oh, good. <laughs> South Dakota? That's what it said. They got a lot of horses in South Dakota, don't they? Well, they got a lot of horses everywhere. Yeah. They got a lot of horses in Arizona. Yeah. And and well, that's a big desert. <laughs> I go. I I see the little ponies and cows on the fields around here. Little. Because they're. Right now they have these little ponies with a lot of fur that can be outside in the winter, right? Oh, like foals. And, and then, and then they have these uh, little cows with tons of fur too. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're kind of cute. Yeah, I, well, and and when those little cows grow up, they'll be very tasty. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I know that what I've what I've noticed about our show here, um, what is we set a topic before the show, yeah, and we we go all over the place. <laughs> we we try we try and stick to it, but 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 uh, it doesn't work. Like no, that. I, I mean because it branches out because you know why? Why? It's all connected. It's all. <laughs> to the cows of the field. Yeah. When, when was the last time you said hi to a cow, Grimm? Uh, I can't. Uh, when I was a teenager, maybe. Uh, yeah, when I, I was a teenager working on a ranch in Utah, and I'd say hi to the cows all the time. Because um, <laughs> I'd be, I'd be the one out there. You know, the one. Well, there, there's various groups of cows. There was those in the large. Uh, grassy area that that didn't need feeding but there was those other cows that were in the the, the smaller corral that they did need feeding and I'd, I'd feed those cows every morning and every afternoon uh so i'd say hi yeah. to those cows yeah i like saying hi to the cows there's okay. just something neat about cows right yeah, yeah and i'd say hi to the hogs and the pigs but i i never said hi to the chickens because the chickens were just stupid um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my dog hurts the chickens uh, uh, sometimes uh, we go by there are two houses not so far from here who both have chickens yeah. and once in a while they uh, they run loops on the little street down there right? and I've noticed Hannah will hurt them okay what kind of dog she, is Hannah? I, huh? what kind of dog is she? But she's a mixed dog but she also has an Australian um, sheep dog and a Jag Russell Terry and a Beagle and a Basset dog. A real mutt. Yeah, she <laughs> <laughs> But then she starts hurting the chickens. Just, you know, clumping them together and getting them over where their house is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so weird. Uh, 
Uh, I take him to have fun, though. Yeah. Yeah, when, yeah. I, when I was a teenager, I used to go out and work out in Utah. Uh, well, a few summers I did, not not every summer, but mm-hmm. a few summers I went out to, to this big ranch. Uh, it was uh, owned by these guys that have a hunting lodge that my stepfather mm-hmm. uh, used to go out there and hunt every year. And and so one year, uh, we were taking a summer vacation, driving vacation out to that ranch. And... Um, uh, and 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 my uh, mom and my stepdad said, "Hey, uh, how would you like to uh, stay out here for the rest of the summer?" Which they were just trying, oh. they were just trying to get rid of me. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't want me at home. They didn't, they didn't want you at home. <laughs> well, if you were like, Which, a... but to me, to me, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was. I was like, "Yep, I'm staying. There ain't no doubt about. It. Well, you're gonna have to work hard. I don't mind." I don't have to be with you guys. I'm fine out here. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so yeah, I would I would work from before sun up till after sundown every day, doing all kinds of ranch stuff that you, I, I learned a lot working out there. Uh, from yeah. Putting putting laying down the irrigation pipes and building fences, putting up barbed wire, uh, uh, herding the cows with with the horses. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, le- learning how to ride the horses and uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, and, uh, yeah, there was, uh, you know, some country Mormon girls out there. <laughs> it, it really, it, you know, the whole garden thing grew on me. It, it's almost addictive. Well, I, not almost. It is addictive. Because I spent, like, what, 30-something years in Copenhagen? Yeah. Not build, not doing gardening. <laughs> right. Well, I did some some guerrilla gardening, but that was pretty much just plant right and let it let it be, right? Right, sure, sure. You uh, didn't go back to to that whole thing. Yeah, you just does, grew it and let it, you know. Right. Does asking if I got paid? No, I did not get paid. But uh, <laughs> we had a lot of good food, man. They they all they talk about your fresh food there. I'd I'd go out there to the the chicken coop, get the fresh chickens. We'd take a you know a mm. hog every now and then. Down down to the slaughterhouse, and you'd have fresh bacon and pork chops and all. I mean, fresh, yeah, fresh. Um, and, and the cattle, of course, you know, good steaks and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, I mean, uh, just, just being out there in, in the uh, country, it, it was worth it to me. Um, and like I said, I, I learned a lot out there. And, and I In think, reality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in reality, you know, work, working, reality. you know. Working the land and uh, such like that. And I saw somebody, who was it, talking about a rattlesnake the other day here. Um, one time I'm out there, I'm hauling hay. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd be, it was already baled, and so I'd, I'd pick up the bales and throw them up on the trailer, and somebody up there would stack them. Anyway, there's one time I'm, uh, I pick up this bale, and what's underneath? A big ass rattler. <laughs> I I tossed that bale right back down on the ground, right on top of that snake. <laughs> I was like, whoa! But I, I dealt with a lot, I dealt with a lot of rattlesnakes out there. Um, yeah, we, there was like some ruins on this uh, Indian reservation that they uh, that, that was part of the rented ranch, I guess you could say, lease mm-hmm. ranch. And uh, so we, we were wandering around out there, and there's, there's uh, like this broken down old bunkhouse or whatever. And, and there's rattlesnake. I, and I was like right in the middle of all these freaking rattlesnakes. They were like, was like, all right, we need to back the hell out of here real slow, like. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, that was like rattlesnake heaven there. Anyway, we're out of time, and I'm rambling on about memories. <laughs> well, I think we had a happy show. Yeah, happy enough. You know, it was good. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. And, and I did not get outraged at all. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Not even close. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, um, hopefully on Wednesday, myself and the Moose Girl will be yeah. on. We'll be on at eight p.m. Eastern doing our new show, Free Your Mind. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll be a we'll be a little esoteric on that program. Um, <laughs> a little extremely esoteric, if I have my way. Moose Girl, mm. you know, she's not as quite as out as out there as I am, but. Uh, Oh. We'll see how it goes. Uh, and then uh, on uh, Friday, Vinny's new program, or 
re revived program, uh, American Dissonance, um, which Ponder Gander, American Dissonance, it ties back together. Um, <laughs> and then Sunday is me on the blues uh, at noon Eastern, followed by Hal Anthony, followed by Gary L and Gigi's Boo. So um, the countdown. And, and then yeah, there's always there's always the stuff going on in the auto DJ, so you can listen to the shows going way back. Um, well, about a year and a half ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there's always uh, old freakers. Old years. freakers. And, yeah, there's always the podcast and all that up there on the website if you want to go that way. There's all kinds of ways to go to listen to this stuff that we talk about. Well, um, I still miss the oh. freakers. I'm, I, I don't easily adjust. Yeah, well, freakers, you know, that was 13 years of that show, man. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, um Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah, have a nice one. Thank yeah. you, everybody, for have listening. A, uh, have a great one. Yeah, go, go, go hawk a tree, right? And and send Grim your money. Try, try, try. Yeah, send me money. Oh, yeah, it's, it's still, yeah. It, it, it is still donation month, although we have exceeded our donation goal. So, um, so very much thanks to all of those who donated uh, so far. And if you want to, uh, well, you know, we still got what eight days, uh, seven days left in this month. So uh, yeah, so donate freely. Um, <laughs> or plums. Just send Grimnir plums. No, the, plums. no, 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 no. Don't you don't, take plums? I don't. I don't take produce through the mail. <laughs> wow. wow, you're a picky fucker. Eh? Uh, you get produce through the mail. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> send Grimnir plums. <laughs> All right. I really like your peaches when I shake your old tree. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. That's it. We're done. Peace. Have a good one, everybody. And uh, go, go, go for Free Your Mind on Wednesday. Yeah. All right. Talk to you later. Peace.